Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today I'd like to teach you about a really amazing herb called Mamsa Rohini. Because again, I'd like to show you the brilliance of my Ayurvedic mentor and teacher, Vajramakant Mishra, who was able to source hundreds of herbs for our very busy practices, some of which are quite rare. And since I'm sure most of you are somewhat familiar with the more commonly used herbs in Ayurveda, like Brahmi, Ashwagandha, and Shilajit, for example, I want to let you know that we finally have in America some of the more amazing and yet for some reason largely unknown herbs used in Ayurveda for difficult to treat health problems. One such herb is known as Mamsa Rohini, known as Soy Mita Febrifugia. And it's famous for building up the musculature wherever there's depletion, and it's also used in wound healing. Now, the term Mamsa Rohini is derived from the root Mamsam Rohayati, meaning that which heals Mamsa Datu. If you recall, there are seven tissues, known as the Datus, which make up our bodies, and they are known in Sanskrit as Rasa, Rakta, Mamsa, Meda, Asti, Maja, and Shukra. These names mean the blood plasma, the blood, muscle, fat, bone, bone marrow, and the reproductive fluids. Now, each one of these tissues has to be properly nourished once our food is digested and assimilated. And the nutrients sequentially make their way through all the seven tissues, starting with the blood plasma and ending with the reproductive fluids, always in that sequence. So mamsadatu is the muscle tissue. And this herb can heal weakened and damaged muscle tissue more than any other herb I know of. In fact, when Vajra was teaching me about this herb, he told me that in India they would demonstrate its efficacy by chopping up meat into very fine little pieces and then sprinkling the meat with this herb. The next morning, the meat would be one piece again, demonstrating its amazing capability of knitting and regenerating the muscles. And sure enough, I was so happy to see how it worked in many cases of damaged and weakened muscles I saw in my practice, in our patients who had multiple sclerosis and their muscles were weak, or the children with muscular dystrophy who also had very weak muscles and were unable to walk. We also used it for healing weak bladder muscles or a damaged esophageal muscle. I remember how excited I was when I first used it on my fibromyalgia patients and I watched them quickly heal from the amazing effects of this herb. Of course, Vija combined it with other remedies to help heal the muscles so the herbs would have a synergistic effect. Now, this is common in Ayurveda. In fact, it's less common to take just one herb for a specific problem. The great formulators of the Ayurvedic herbs, such as Dr. Mishra, knew from years of studying the herbs how to combine them together to prevent side effects and at the same time increase their, increase their potency. In addition, the ancient texts recommended using channel opening herbs and spices mixed within the formula to enhance the absorption of that herb into the cells. Just like nowadays, everyone knows to combine turmeric with black pepper, since the pepper increases its absorption by quite a lot, like about 2,000%, compared to taking the turmeric without the pepper. And when Vai just shares his personal formula for healing hard-to-treat wounds with me, he told me that once the patient used this decoction of herbs on the wound, he recommended they take this herb internally, the Mumsa Rohini, to heal the skin. And research shows that it can heal both muscles and the skin as well, which is why it's always indicated in wound healing. It's very good for one's skin tone and complexion as a result of its skin healing capabilities. And this is also a great herb for our elderly patients who have low appetite, since it can improve the taste of the food, which helps in bringing back the appetite. Also, as we age, our muscles break down. Many elderly people lose weight due to the muscle wasting that occur. So this is the best herb to take for reversal of the aging process due to its capabilities of causing cell and tissue rejuvenation. Now again, as with all the other herbs I've talked about, it's best to contact an Ayurvedic physician who's well versed in the use of these herbs because it isn't a question of just taking an herb to heal your health problem. Instead, the first step is to, to determine all the reasons for the imbalances which are unique to each individual person. Then you can branch out from there, kind of like layering the treatments, using the herbs, food, spices for healing, the daily routine, the bedtime, exposure to sunlight and darkness, 
exercise, balancing the mental and emotional states, and of course, of course the cleanses that we use. But see, the trick is that all of this has to be tailored to you and you alone, because no other person has the unique reasons for their health problems, even if the health problem has the same name. In other words, you could treat 20 patients for multiple sclerosis, but each one of them will walk away with a different protocol of herbs, different dietary recommendations, and different cleanses based on what they alone need and can tolerate. So I know how excited you must be to learn about this very rare herb, but again, please don't go out and try to buy it and take it on your own without being supervised. If you don't do the rest of the work involved, this herb won't have the same efficacy as if you have a good diet, good daily routine, and pull the toxins out of the muscle and skin, which someone will have to show you how to do. I hope you enjoyed learning about Mamsa Rohini. I know it was one of the more exciting herbs I've ever learned about, and I enjoy having it in my arsenal of over 500 formulations to offer to our patients for healing at the deepest possible level. Thank you.